Greetings and welcome, I'm Brian Posey, and today I want to show you a technique for dealing with long-running PowerShell scripts. Now, if you have a PowerShell script that's going to take a long time to run, there are a couple of different ways that you can deal with that. One option is to create a progress bar that slowly inches its way across the screen so that you can keep track of how long the script is taking to run. That's certainly a viable option, there are plenty of scripts that do that. Another option is to simply create a job. Now, what a job does is it allows the long-running script to run in the background. And the advantage to this is that it doesn't tie up your PowerShell session. So you're free to work on other things while your script progresses in the background. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's suppose for a moment that we wanted to create a script that counts from 1 up to 10 million. And as it counts each number, it adds it to a sum total. So that what you're eventually left with is the sum of every number between 1 and 10 million all added together. Well, as you can imagine, depending on the speed of your machine, a script like that could take some time to complete. So you could create a progress bar that helps you to monitor the progress of that. But another way that you could handle that sort of thing is by creating a job. So let's take a look at how this works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable that I'll call job. And I'm going to set that equal to start job, start dash job being the native PowerShell commandlet that defines a job. And so now we need to tell PowerShell what's going to happen as a part of that job. So I'm going to create a script block. And then within that script block, I'm going to set up a counter that counts from 1 until 10 million. And actually, I think I'll make it 100 million for this particular example. And then I'm going to add a pipe symbol. And then I'll type measure object. And then dash sum. And then a closing bracket. And when I press enter, you can see that I'm returned to the PowerShell prompt almost immediately. So what's happening is that I have created a script and that script is running, but it's running in the background. So I still have full control over the PowerShell environment. So how do we check on our script to see if it's still running? Well, let's take a look at the job variable because even though we created a job, remember we mapped it to the variable dollar sign job. And that variable works just like any other variable. So I'll type dollar sign job. And if you take a look, we can see the job ID, the job name, the PowerShell job type name, and the state. The state indicates that this particular job is still running. So anytime that we want to check the state of this particular job, we can type dollar sign job dot state and press enter. And we can see that that job is indeed still running. And incidentally, PowerShell also shows us the location where the job is running. In this case, we're running on a local host. And we can see the command that is associated with the job. In this case, we're counting from 1 to 100 million and then adding all of those numbers together. So let's go ahead and check on the status of the job. And the job is still running. So what would we do if we decided that this job is taking too long and we need to cancel it? Well, let's take a look one more time at the job state. And in this case, the job is completed. So let's go ahead and restart the job. Okay, so the job has started. Let's take a look at its state. And the job is running, and it's going to be running for quite some time. So how would we go ahead and cancel out of this job if we decided that, you know what, it's taking too long, I want to abort this job? Well, what we would do is type stop job. And then we would specify the variable that's associated with that job. So dollar sign job. And so presumably the job has been terminated at this point. But if we want to check on it, we can type dollar sign job dot state. And now we can see that the job is stopped. So whereas before it was running and then once the job finished, it showed a status of completed. Now we're showing a status of stopped. So that's how you can interrupt a job that's taking a little bit too long to run. Now, what about the job output? How would you handle that? Well, the way that you generally handle output is by displaying the contents of a variable. Let me show you how this works. What I'm going to do is start a new job. And in the interest of time, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller in number. We'll just get rid of a couple of zeros. 
and I'll go ahead and press enter. And let's check to see how long the job is going to take to run. So I'm going to type dollar sign job dot state. And the job has already completed. So how do we get the results? Because remember, we're taking all of those numbers that we counted to and we're adding them all together to get a sum. So that sum is what we really want out of this particular block of code. Well, the way that we do that is we set up another variable. I'm going to type dollar sign result. So dollar sign result is the name of a variable that I'm creating to store the results of my measure object command. And I'll set that equal to receive dash job. And then we have to specify the job name. So dollar sign job and I'll press enter. And then if I type dollar sign result, I can see the sum right there. And if I wanted to get just the specific number that I'm after, what I could do is I could type dollar sign result dot sum. And then I would get the result that I'm interested in. So that's just kind of how a job works. But I want to show you all of this integrated into a script. So what I've done is I've created a script called jobs.ps1. And I start out right here by creating a variable called dollar sign job. And I set that equal to start job. And then the script block is exactly what you saw a moment ago. We're counting from one to a very large number, and then I'm using measure object to create a sum of all of the numbers that I've added together. So the next thing that I'm doing right here is waiting for the job to complete, because the nice thing about jobs is that they run in the background, but let's suppose that you did want to monitor a running job. Well, what you see right here is one way of doing that. So I've set up a while loop, and I'm checking the job state, and I'm checking to see if the job state is equal to running. And if the job is still running because its state is equal to running, then I'm going to run this block of code right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to display a line of text saying that the job is still running. Then we're going to start a sleep timer. And that sleep timer is going to count for five seconds. And then once five seconds is up, what we're going to do at that point is set up a variable dollar sign job. And we're going to set that equal to get job dash ID dollar sign job dot ID. And so then the loop starts all over again. So eventually this job will finish running. And so at that point, we want to see the results and we're doing exactly what I did a moment ago. I'm setting up a variable called dollar sign result and I'm setting that equal to receive job. That's the commandlet that takes the output from a job. And then we have to specify the job and the job that we're looking at is dollar sign job. And then to display the results, all I'm doing is I'm using the write output commandlet and then I'm typing the sum is, and then dollar sign result dot sum. And then at the very end, I've got one last command that I haven't shown you yet. And that command is remove dash job. And then I specify the job that I want to remove. So let's go ahead and run our script. I'm going to switch over to PowerShell and I'm going to type dot slash jobs dot PS1. I'll press enter and I'll go ahead and run the script. And you can see text saying job is still running and then it's going to wait five seconds and check again. So there's our next check. It says that the job is still running. We're waiting another five seconds. The job is still running. We'll wait another five seconds. And eventually the job completes and we can see the sum total. So that's how you can run a long running process inside of a job. I'm Brian Posey. Thanks for watching.